In 1999, a young woman named Gia lived in the picturesque landscapes of South Africa with her small but close-knit family. At 23, Gia was a dedicated student, pursuing her dreams and aspirations with unwavering determination. Yet, amidst her academic pursuits, there was a deep-seated passion within her that had been brewing since childhood, a burning desire to explore the vast and enchanting world of the seaside. As a child, Gia's heart had always been drawn to the sea, its waves and mysteries calling out to her. However, her family, who held her dear, had refused to grant her this simple wish. But as Gia blossomed into a young woman, her longing for the sea only intensified. She spent every free moment she could muster searching for information about the oceans of the world. She immersed herself in books, documentaries, and online resources, learning about the diverse marine life, stunning coral reefs, and the sense of tranquility that only the sea could provide. Gia's family could see the yearning in her eyes, the restless spirit that longed for adventure, and the embrace of the salty breeze. Her father, a man who could never bear to see his daughter in distress, noticed her quiet sadness. He understood that Gia's heart was tethered to the sea, and he decided it was time to make her dreams come true and to see that radiant smile on her face again. One evening, he gathered the family together and proposed an idea to change their lives forever. A family tour to the seaside. The very notion of this trip brought joy and excitement to every member of the family. Gia was overwhelmed with gratitude for her father's understanding and support. Gia's university announced the upcoming summer vacation, and her heart leaped with joy when she heard the news. She rushed home, eager to share the excellent information about their holiday. Her two sisters, caught up in their respective lives and responsibilities, also saw the importance of this trip. They decided on a date, the 28th of July, a Sunday when everyone would be free from their work and commitments. Gia couldn't wait to experience the sea for the first time, and her excitement was contagious. She envisioned capturing countless moments with her camera, preserving memories that would last a lifetime. Finally, the day arrived and the family embarked on their journey to the sea. Upon arrival, they felt an immediate relaxation as they strolled along the sun-kissed shoreline. With her adventurous spirit, Gia suggested they rent two paddleboards, one for her parents and one for herself and her sisters. When they paddled out farther into the sea, the calmness of the ocean surrounded them. The world seemed to fade away, leaving only the soothing sounds of the waves and the gentle swaying of their boards. It was a moment of pure bliss, a respite from the worries of everyday life. However, tragedy struck most unexpectedly and horrifyingly. In the distance, near her parents' board, a massive white and fearsome creature emerged from the depths, the dreaded great white shark. It circled their parents' board, a menacing presence in the otherwise calm sea. Panic ensued as the board beneath Gia's parents became unsteady and they were thrown into the water. With their voracious appetite, the great white sharks did not waste any time. The unthinkable happened in minutes. The ruthless predators devoured Gia's parents. Their lives extinguished in a horrifying blur. Gia and her sisters could only watch in utter helplessness and despair. Their world crumbled before their eyes, and the weight of the tragedy pressed down upon them like an impossible burden. They were left with nothing but the haunting image of their parents' last moments. In a daze, Gia and her sisters paddled back to the shore, their hearts heavy with grief. News of the horrifying incident spread like wildfire, and concerned relatives rushed to console them. The weight of guilt settled upon Gia's shoulders as she blamed herself for suggesting the fateful paddleboarding adventure. Her sisters, however, tried to reason with her, explaining that this was an unforeseeable tragedy, an accident beyond anyone's control. But Gia couldn't shake the feeling that her desire for the sea had led to the loss of their parents. Time passed, but the pain of that fateful day continued to linger. Once a place of wonder and fascination, the seaside holds a haunting memory. Gia's passion for the sea had become a source of anguish, a reminder of the tragedy that had befallen her family. As the years went by, Gia and her sisters leaned on each other for support, their bond growing stronger in the face of adversity. They tried to honor their parents' memory by living life to the fullest, just as their parents had always encouraged them. Gia eventually found the strength to confront her guilt 
and accept that she couldn't have foreseen the tragedy that had unfolded. It was a long and painful journey, but she slowly began to heal. In time, she decided to pursue a career in marine conservation, dedicating her life to protecting the oceans and the creatures that inhabit them. It was a way for her to channel her love for the sea into something positive that would make her parents proud. As a result, life continued as it always does, and Gia's family, despite their tragic loss, managed to find their way through the vast sea of existence with the help of their parents' enduring love and memories, as well as the strength they drew from one another. In the charming coastal town of Blue Harbor, nestled along the shores of Greece, the serene facade of the Aegean Sea's sapphire waters and pebbled beaches concealed its enigmatic depths, shrouded in mystery and danger. In the enchanting year of 2001, a chilling encounter with the ocean's apex predator took place at this picturesque location. Blue Harbor was renowned for its beauty and diverse marine life, attracting adventurers and nature enthusiasts worldwide. Isabella Bella Dimitriou, a passionate marine biology student hailing from Athens, had always been captivated by the allure of the ocean. Her dream was to unravel its secrets and protect its delicate ecosystems. Raised by her father, a renowned marine conservationist, Dr. Nikos Dimitriou, Bella inherited a deep reverence for the ocean's wonders. Despite the allure of her father's thriving marine research institute, she pursued her path, driven by a desire to explore the underwater world firsthand. Bella's pursuit of a marine biology degree was fueled by a determination to contribute to the preservation of marine life. As a student, Bella was admired by her peers for her dedication and zeal for marine conservation. Her closest companions, Noah and Ava, formed a tight-knit trio bound by their shared passion for the ocean's mysteries. Together they delved into their studies, embarked on beach expeditions, and envisioned a future where they'd champion marine sustainability. One fateful summer day in August 2001, Bella, Noah, and Ava learned of an exclusive event at Blue Harbor's prestigious Marine Research Center. The event promised an exclusive opportunity to dive in an underwater aquarium with sharks, offering participants an up-close and personal experience with these awe-inspiring creatures. Eager to seize this unique opportunity, the trio eagerly registered, anticipating an unforgettable underwater adventure. They arrived at the research center where the large enclosed aquarium was the centerpiece. Dr. Jonathan Turner, a seasoned marine biologist, greeted them and explained the safety measures and protocols for the dive. The aquarium was home to a diverse array of marine life, including several species of sharks. The dive began with a thorough briefing and a review of the dive equipment. The trio donned their wetsuits, masks, and diving gear, their excitement palpable as they prepared for the adventure of a lifetime. Bella's heart raced as she looked at the aquarium's massive glass walls, knowing she was about to share the water with the ocean's apex predators. Her awe was immeasurable as Bella descended into the crystal-clear water, surrounded by the gentle swaying of marine life. The sharks, majestic and graceful, glided effortlessly through the water. It was a surreal sight, an underwater ballet that captivated her senses. They navigated the underwater environment with Dr. Turner's guidance, staying a respectful distance from the sharks. The beauty and tranquility of the underwater world enveloped them, a mesmerizing dance of colors and currents. However, as Bella swam alongside the sharks, an unexpected twist altered the course of events. A sudden surge of bubbles obscured her vision, and her dive mask became dislodged, momentarily blinding her. Disoriented, Bella struggled to regain her bearings, her heart pounding as panic threatened to take hold. The disruption in the water caught the shark's attention, triggering a shift in their behavior. Sensing an opportunity, one of the more giant sharks veered closer, drawn by the commotion. Bella's heart raced as she realized the shark's proximity, its powerful form a blend of elegance and primal power. With her vision still obscured, Bella fought to clear her mask and regain control of her breathing. The seconds felt like an eternity as the shark's presence loomed closer. Suddenly, the water around Bella churned with a surge of movement. Before she could react, the shark's powerful jaws clamped down on her arm. Piercing, searing pain shot through her as the shark's teeth sank into her flesh. A guttural scream erupted underwater, intertwining with the symphony of churning waves and the astonished gasps of her companions. 
Time appeared to decelerate as Bella grappled with the excruciating reality, her arm ensnared within the tenacious grasp of the predator. Noah and Ava instinctively sprang into action, drawing upon their training and intuition. Recognizing the urgency, they unleashed shouts and orchestrated a flurry of movements in the water. Amid the turmoil, Dr. Turner's authoritative voice pierced through the tumult, providing guidance within the chaos as Bella wrestled to liberate herself from the shark's vice-like jaws. Summoning a wellspring of determination, Bella engaged in a heart-pounding struggle, pushing against the unyielding force of the shark's grip. Her friend's concerted efforts yielded results. The shark's focus momentarily wavered, allowing her to wrench her arm free from its hold. Her skin bore the brutal imprints of the encounter, mingling blood with the surrounding water, an unyielding testament to the primal clash that had just transpired. The impact of the attack left Bella disoriented and in shock. Dr. Turner's quick thinking led to activating the research center's security measures. A metal mesh descended around her, separating her from the sharks and creating a safety barrier. Despite the adrenaline coursing through her veins, Bella's injuries were evident, an array of bite marks on her arm, deep and jagged. As the security team arrived, their combined efforts warded off the bull shark's advances. Bella's arm hung limp and bloodied, her pain evident in every labored breath. With utmost care, the paramedics tended to her injuries, stabilizing her condition as they prepared to transport her to the nearest medical facility. The night that had promised wonder and discovery had transformed into a harrowing battle for survival, forever etched in the memories of those who bore witness. Bella's journey to recovery would be marked by resilience, the scars on her arm a testament to her indomitable spirit. Her friends, Noah and Ava, stood by her side, their bond forged in the crucible of adversity more vital than ever, as Bella was whisked away to receive medical attention. Blue Harbor's tranquil shores bore witness to a new chapter in its history. The encounter with the ocean's apex predator served as a humbling reminder of the raw power and untamed beauty that lurked beneath the waves. The incident reverberated through the community, prompting a renewed respect and awe for the creatures that called the ocean home. In the aftermath of that fateful night, the physical and emotional wounds began to heal, a testament to human resilience in the face of nature's unforgiving forces. Bella's determination to continue her studies in connection with the ocean remained unshaken. As the tides continued to ebb and flow, Blue Harbor stood as a testament to the delicate balance between humanity and the untamed ocean realm, forever bound by the memory of that deadly encounter. Abigail Simmons has always been drawn to the beauty of the ocean. She was captivated by the rhythmic crash of waves against the rocky shore, and the vast expanse of blue moving out to the horizon. At 40 years old, Abigail maintained the adventurous spirit of her youth and frequently sought solace in the arms of nature. Abigail's haven was San Sebastian Beach, North California, where the rugged coastline met the endless Pacific Ocean. On a crisp autumn morning in 2004, Abigail perched herself on the cliffs overlooking the sea. She hung her trusty camera around her neck relying on it as a faithful companion during her journeys of exploration. The sun began to rise, casting a warm golden glow across the water. Seagulls wheeled overhead. Their cries echoed the timeless song of the ocean. Abigail inhaled the salty air, her eyes fixating on the horizon. As the waves danced below, a surge of boldness coursed through Abigail. She wanted to get closer to feel the spray on her skin and capture the raw power of the sea up close. She slowly edged closer to the cliff's edge, her feet dangling over the precipice. The ocean's roar filled her senses, and she lost herself in the moment. The relentless rhythm of the waves beckoned her, whispering secrets of the deep. The camera clicked and whirred as it captured the play of light and shadow on the water's surface. She frames the shot with expert precision, the beauty of nature unfolding before her lens. Then suddenly, a massive dorsal fin cut through the water's surface as if it had emerged from the depths of her worst nightmares. Abigail's heart leaped into her throat and she froze. Before her, a great white shark, a behemoth of the deep, circled ominously. The once tranquil scene transformed into a heart-pounding nightmare. Abigail's breaths came in ragged gasps as her mind raced to comprehend the dangerous situation she had found herself in. The predator below gleamed in the morning light 
its rows of razor-sharp teeth as a stark reminder of the ocean's unforgiving nature. In the face of this primal terror, Abigail's instincts kicked in. She knew she had to retreat, so she put distance between herself and the approaching menace. With trembling legs, she pulled herself away from the edge of the cliffs, her eyes never leaving the circling shark. But she realized it was too late. The predator locked onto her presence with an uncanny sense of purpose. It struck with a swift, savage movement, baring its teeth in a flurry of white and gray. Abigail barely had time to react. The impact hit her from below like a freight train. The world around her erupted into chaos as she was torn from the cliffs and plunged into the icy embrace of the Pacific. Salt water stung her eyes and filled her mouth as she thrashed in the dark abyss. The once serene ocean transformed into a battleground, and Abigail became the unwilling combatant. Panic surged through her veins as her limbs flailed, and she futilely struggled to stay afloat against the pull of the depths. As hope seemed to slip away, Abigail glimpsed the relentless predator, circling back for another pass. The shark locked onto her as an evil intelligence lurked within. The creature was a product of pure instinct, honed by millions of years of evolution into a ruthless killing machine. As the colossal jaws of the shark drew nearer, Abigail realized she had mere seconds left. Her mind raced through the stories she had heard of such encounters, tales of survival and loss. She had always hoped to be on the side of those who survived to tell the tale. As despair claimed her, a glimmer of hope emerged from the murky depths. A boat operated by a group of weathered fishermen had appeared on the horizon. They witnessed the horrifying spectacle unfold and race towards the fray. The fishermen, grizzled ocean veterans, had witnessed the sea's brutality. But nothing could have prepared them for the sight that greeted them that fateful morning. They were etched into their memories. The woman in the water frantically splashed, the shark circled and the tragedy loomed. Abigail fought to stay afloat with every ounce of strength she possessed. The chilling water sapped her energy and her limbs grew heavy. The vastness of the ocean swallowed her screams for help. A battle of wills ensued as a lone human faced off against a relentless apex predator. The fishermen wasted no time, their faces etched with determination and concern. They maneuvered their boat precisely, closing the gap between them and the unfolding horror. Their oars cut through the water with purpose as the boat sliced through the waves like a knife. The moments ticked away, and each one felt like an eternity. The shark sensed that its prey was slipping away and surged forward with renewed vigor. Its immense form was breaking the surface. Its teeth gleamed in the harsh sunlight. The fishermen knew they raced against time. They had to reach Abigail before the shark did. With a final burst of effort, they pulled alongside her just as the predator closed in for the kill. Rough hands reached out and grabbed Abigail's arms, pulling her aboard the boat. Her body trembled, her skin pale as death. The adrenaline coursed through her veins, keeping her conscious. The fishermen did not waste any time in putting distance between themselves and the monstrous shark. They knew that the battle was far from over. The Great White continued to circle, reminding everyone of the dangers lurking beneath the ocean's surface. Abigail kept her gaze fixed on the pursuing terror as the boat sped away. Undeterred by its missed opportunity, the shark continued to patrol the waters. Its dark eye glinted with primal hunger. The creature was born of eons, surviving in its own right, and would not be deterred so easily. The fishermen, undaunted by the relentless pursuit, experienced the ways of the sea. They knew they couldn't outrun the shark indefinitely. In a desperate bid to divert their attention, they made a gut-wrenching decision. One of the fishermen, a seasoned mariner named Carlos, volunteered to offer himself as a sacrifice. He climbed to the edge of the boat, grimly determined, his heart heavy with the weight of his decision. He held a large fish, and its scales glinted in the sunlight. Carlos swiftly hurled the fish into the water, and the splash echoed like a death knell. Driven by instinct, the shark couldn't resist the tempting bait. It closed its jaws around the fish in a lightning-fast strike. A burst of foam and frenzy marked the moment. The sacrifice bought them precious seconds. The fishermen seized the opportunity and steered the boat further offshore, leaving the monstrous predator in their wake. The relentless pursuit of the shark became a distant specter on the horizon, a testament to the bravery and cunning of those who defied the odds. Once they were safely back on solid ground, 
Abigail's companions rushed her to a nearby clinic. They found her body battered and bruised, but miraculously intact. The doctors and nurses worked with urgency, tending to her injuries with skill and care. The human body's resilience was a testament, reminding everyone of the strength within each individual. As the days passed, Abigail's body healed, but the scars, both seen and unseen, served as a lasting reminder of that fateful encounter. She would forever carry the memory of that harrowing day, etching it into the very fabric of her being. The camera, once a faithful companion on countless adventures, lay in ruins, a casualty of the brutal encounter. The shattered lens and waterlogged casing reflected somberly the natural world's power. But Abigail knew that material possessions could be replaced, while life was an irreplaceable gift. Abigail returned to her hotel room, and the weight of the experience settled around her like a cloak. She was staring out at the ocean, once a source of solace, now holding a new reverence. She stared into the abyss and emerged, forever changed. In the days that followed, Abigail found solace in the embrace of friends and loved ones. Once a source of wonder, the ocean now held a more profound significance. It served as a reminder of the untamed beauty that coexisted with the fragility of life. The picturesque, quaint coastal town of Port Harbour, nestled on the rugged shores of South Australia, was known for its breathtaking cliffs, pristine beaches, and a history steeped in maritime lore. The relentless waves of the Southern Ocean crashed against the rocky outcrops, creating a symphony that echoed through the narrow cobblestone streets. Port Harbour, though idyllic, held a dark secret beneath its azure waters. Ancient predators ruled a realm where nature's untamed power reigned supreme. Great white sharks, known for their size and ferocity, patrol the depths, reminding everyone of the raw, unforgiving force of the ocean. In 2003, Sarah Mitchell, a resilient woman with a keen sense of adventure, embarked on a business trip to Port Harbor. Her brown hair danced in the salty breeze, and her sea-green eyes hinted at love for the unknown as they held a spark. James Mitchell stood as her steadfast support. After days of work meetings and negotiations, Sarah yearned for a respite from the confines of boardrooms. In her free moments, she set her sights on the beach, eagerly tasting the salt-laden air and feeling the rush of the waves against her skin. Little did she know that her venture into the ocean's embrace would unleash a nightmare beyond imagination. Sarah paddled out on her bodyboard and the sun kissed the horizon casting hues of gold and crimson across the water. The rhythmic dance of the waves lulled her into a state of tranquility, but beneath the surface, unseen eyes were tracking her every movement. A colossal shadow materialized without warning, slicing through the surface with its dorsal fin. The predator, a great white of massive proportions, stroked with a ferocity that shatters the moment's serenity. Sarah's screams pierced the air as the merciless jaws clutched her body causing her to thrash. She witnessed a swift and brutal attack, a visceral clash of survival instincts. Once a sanctuary, the ocean transforms into a battleground of primal forces. Nearby locals, alerted by the commotion, rushed to Sarah's aid. Their boats were slicing through the waves as a beacon of hope in the chaos. With a collective effort, Sarah was freed from the jaws of the Great White. Their hearts pounded with adrenaline-fueled determination. They whisked Sarah, who was battered and bleeding, away to the safety of the shore. The authorities were summoned, and their arrival demonstrated the gravity of the situation. From there, they rushed her to Port Harbor General Hospital, a sanctuary that witnessed many tales of maritime peril. James, who had witnessed the horror from the shore, stood frozen in a moment of helplessness. His anguished cries echoed off the cliffs, creating a haunting symphony of despair and disbelief. Weeks passed and Sarah's body started healing the scars, but her soul carried much deeper scars. The incident left an indelible mark, reminding everyone of nature's untamed fury. Sarah and James returned home and the encounter had forever changed their lives. However, Sarah's resilience proved unwavering. She advocated for shark conservation, channeling her experience into a mission to protect these misunderstood creatures. The haunting memory of that fateful day fueled her determination to bridge the gap between humans and the wild, untamed beauty of the ocean. Sarah's legacy echoed through the ages, 
showcasing the strength of the human spirit and the awe-inspiring power of the untamed sea. Years passed, and momentum grew for Sarah's advocacy work. She traveled the world, speaking at conferences and collaborating with marine biologists and conservationists. Her voice became a beacon of hope for people striving to understand and protect the delicate balance of marine ecosystems. One summer, Sarah returned to Port Harbor where it all began. The memories lingered, but he now tempered them with a sense of purpose and a newfound respect for the ocean's untamed inhabitants. One evening, Sarah stood on the same beach that had borne witness to her harrowing ordeal. Captain Elias Donovan, a weathered seafarer, approached from the shoreline with eyes that held the wisdom of an experience and stood tall. He greeted Miss Mitchell with a knowing smile, his weathered lips playing. The assistant heard of the user's endeavors. Their dedication to these creatures is commendable. The captain turned their gaze towards the horizon where the sea and sky met in an endless embrace. The ocean holds its wonders and its guardians protect it. Their shared understanding transcends words. Sarah knew the ocean could be untamed and unforgiving, but it also contained a profound beauty that resonated with those who dared to venture into its depths. Sarah and Captain Donovan stood together, bound by a common reverence. At that moment, the echoes of Sarah's encounter with the great white shark merged with the timeless rhythm of the sea, testifying to the enduring power of nature and the indomitable spirit of those who dare to venture into its embrace. In 2000, a young girl named Melinda lived in a quaint corner of South Australia. She belonged to a loving family, and her husband worked for a well-known Australian company. Melinda, passionate about swimming, dedicated her days to teaching the art of swimming at a local learning center. Despite the hectic schedules and busy routines, the family always made it a point to come together for dinner. It was during one such evening that their lives took an unexpected turn. As the family gathered around the dinner table, their children began sharing stories of their friends' vacations with their families. They longed for the freedom to explore away from the shackles of their demanding jobs and responsibilities. Embarking on a family adventure sparked a glimmer of hope in their hearts. Seeing the restlessness in their children's eyes, Melinda and her husband realized the importance of spending quality time together. Amidst the chaos of their daily lives, they had unintentionally drifted apart. The decision was unanimous. It was time for a family vacation. The family decided on a picturesque destination, the seaside town of Picnic Point, along the Australian coastline. Sunday finally arrived and the family was brimming with anticipation. Melinda's husband revved up the jeep and they all piled in ready for the journey ahead. Their destination was a few hours away, but the drive was part of the adventure. The calming sound of the waves and the pleasant atmosphere of families spending the day at the beach welcomed them to the seaside town. The family found a perfect spot to set up their picnic and began soaking in the beauty of the surroundings. While some family members strolled along the shoreline snapping photos and sipping drinks, Melinda and her husband changed into swimsuits. They waded into the water, feeling its gentle caress on their skin, and began to swim. Little did they know that beneath the surface of the seemingly calm sea, two enormous white great sharks lay in slumber. As they awoke to the commotion above, the sound of splashing water and the presence of humans piqued their interest. The sharks, driven by their instincts, slowly began approaching the noise source, Melinda's family. The family, blissfully unaware of the lurking danger, continued to revel in the water. Suddenly, with swift and chilling precision, the two great white sharks launched themselves toward the family, jaws wide open. Panic ensued as the sharks attacked, targeting every family member, including Melinda's precious children. Melinda, a strong and experienced swimmer, reacted with lightning speed. She swam fiercely, attempting to shield her children from the predators. In the chaos that followed, her husband and other family members were gravely injured in the ferocious attack. The horrifying scene attracted the attention of beachgoers, who rushed to help. They dialed for emergency services, and a team of paramedics soon arrived. Melinda's family was evacuated from the water, and first aid was administered while awaiting an ambulance. The victims were rushed to the nearest hospital, their injuries severe and their lives hanging in the balance. Doctors and surgeons worked tirelessly to save them, performing surgeries one after another. 
Tragically, Melinda's mother-in-law succumbed to her injuries, leaving the family shattered by grief. As Melinda and her husband recovered in their hospital rooms, the news of their beloved mother's death weighed heavily on their hearts. The shock and sorrow were unimaginable, and their children grappled with fear and uncertainty. The memory of that fateful day, the shark attack, and losing their dear family member haunted them for years. The physical and emotional scars were a constant reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of cherishing every moment with loved ones. Their story became a topic of discussion in the media, shedding light on the dangers lurking beneath the surface of the serene seas. Though the pain of that tragic day would never fade, they clung to the memories of their mother, grandmother, and the love they had shared. Ultimately, Melinda's family emerged from the depths of tragedy with newfound strength, resilience, and an unwavering appreciation for the precious gift of family and time spent together. The year was 1948, and the air was chilled with the biting November winds that swept across the waters of the coast of St. John, a small and tranquil island nestled in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Christopher Oswald had just emerged from a long and raucous night of drinking and revelry with his friends, the remnants of the alcohol still clouding his mind and making his steps unsteady. St. John, U.S. Virgin Islands coastline is a breathtaking sight to behold. Towering cliffs of jagged rock rise from the sparkling blue waters below, their rugged peaks carved and shaped by the relentless force of the sea. The waves crash against the shoreline with a mighty roar, sending sprays of white foam shooting up into the air like a thousand tiny fireworks. But for Christopher and his friends, the beauty of the coastline meant nothing as they could barely walk after a night of drinking. Christopher Oswald stumbled aboard the boat, reeking of alcohol and teetering dangerously on unsteady legs. The night's revelry had left him in a haze of intoxication, his thoughts muddled and his actions unpredictable. As the boat sliced through the dark waters towards their destination, the gentle lapping of the waves seemed to lull Christopher into a false sense of security. Suddenly, with a drunken laugh, he hurled himself over the boat's edge, his body plunging into the icy water below. Shock gasp and cries rang out as his friends and the crew watched in disbelief, frozen by the sheer recklessness of Christopher's actions. Desperate to bring him back to safety, they frantically called out to him, their voices carrying over the wind and waves. But Christopher remained stubbornly in the water, his intoxicated mind convinced he was invincible. As the boat drifted aimlessly, the crew's frustration mounted by the second, one of them finally throwing a life buoy connected to a rope, hoping to coax Christopher back on board. But his drunken defiance held strong, and he refused to budge from his position in the water, his careless actions bringing their journey to an abrupt and unwanted halt. Suddenly, the tranquil waters of the night turned into chaos as Christopher's screams echoed through the boat and the surrounding sea. His friends and boat crew frantically searched for him, but their confusion turned to horror when they saw what was happening. The water around Christopher had turned into a crimson pool, and they realized with gut-wrenching dread that he was being attacked by something in the depths. The marshal's trembling hands again threw the buoy, hoping to save Christopher from whatever was dragging him down. But as soon as the buoy landed in the water, a huge bull shark emerged from the darkness, its massive jaws tearing through Christopher's flesh with terrifying power. The shark's razor-sharp teeth gnashed through Christopher's neck and shoulders, sending droplets of blood cascading through the air like a macabre fountain. The screams of Christopher and his friends mixed with the sounds of the water being torn apart by the violent shark attack. The boat rocked violently as the people tried to comprehend the horror unfolding before them. The brutal assault was a heart-stopping moment that shattered the peacefulness of the serene sea. With its powerful jaws and razor-sharp teeth, the ferocious bull shark struck with lightning speed. The gruesome attack was relentless, leaving no chance of survival for poor Christopher. 
As the shark clamped down on his neck and shoulders, the force of the bite was so strong that it shattered bones and tore flesh apart. Blood gushed like a fountain, staining the surrounding water in a gruesome display of violence. Screams of horror and disbelief echoed as the people on the boat witnessed the terrorizing event. They were frozen in shock, unable to move or speak, as they watched the life drain out of Christopher's body. The once vibrant man was now a lifeless limp figure, a victim of the ruthless predator. The shark's attack was brutal, and it seemed determined to inflict as much harm as possible. With a ferocity that bordered on madness, the beast lunged toward Christopher's defenseless body, its jaws clamping down on the already torn remains of his torso. The water turned into a frenzy of red as the shark whipped its prey back and forth, tearing him apart. The boat's occupants looked on in horror, powerless to intervene as the shark inflicted its brutal assault. With every passing moment, the realization sank that Christopher's fate was sealed. The shark would not let go of its prey until it had claimed its kill. Then, with a powerful pull, the shark dragged Christopher's lifeless body beneath the surface, disappearing into the ocean's murky depths. The only remnants of the tragedy were the waves of blood that continued to ripple across the water's surface and the severed arm that floated eerily in the water, a haunting reminder of the violent attack that had just taken place. With adrenaline coursing through his veins, the captain hastily maneuvered the boat from the violent whirlpool of blood and carnage. As they sped toward safety, the passengers were shocked and in disbelief at the events unfolding. Despite the immediate report to the authorities, days and weeks of searching proved fruitless as the body of Christopher Oswald remained elusive, lost to the dark and unforgiving depths of the ocean. The sun had yet to rise, casting a bluish hue over the serene Miley Beach in Oahu, Hawaii. Despite the chilly weather on December 1952, the beach was still brimming with activity as beachgoers reveled in the stunning views of the ocean and the swaying palm trees. Gabe and Tabor were among those who decided to take advantage of the day, gearing up for a fishing trip on the tranquil waters of Hawaii. The two fishermen expertly navigated their way through the calm waters, the rhythmic sound of the waves lulling them into tranquility. They sailed further to sea, heading towards the deeper waters, where they hoped to cast their nets and reel in a bountiful catch. The misty morning air kissed their cheeks, and the salty scent of the sea invigorated their senses giving them renewed energy to brave the cold. The chilly water of Miley Beach sent shivers down Gabe's spine as he plunged in. He took a deep breath and felt the coldness fill his lungs. He immediately got to work, swimming around the boat to ensure the nets were set properly. With each stroke, he could feel the frigid water envelop him. Meanwhile, Tabor was busy coiling ropes and fixing lines on deck when he noticed a dark figure lurking beneath the surface. His heart leapt into his throat as he realized what it was. He called out to Gabe in a panic, urging him to get out of the water before it was too late. Confused and alarmed, Gabe quickly approached the boat, unaware of what was lurking below. The water around him grew colder and more sinister with each stroke. As he got closer to the boat, he saw a dark shape moving swiftly towards him, its size and speed causing him to freeze in fear. Gabe had already swum five feet from the boat when a sudden movement caught his eye. From beneath the tranquil waters, a massive predator rose like a dark shadow, its powerful body slicing through the water like a missile. It was a tiger shark, one of the most feared beasts of the ocean. And this one was a behemoth measuring a staggering 22 feet in length. Before Gabe could defend himself, the shark had lunged at him with lightning speed, its jaws unhinged to reveal rows of razor-sharp teeth. With a loud snap, the predator clamped down on Gabe's shoulder, its teeth sinking deep into his flesh and crushing his bones in a powerful grip. 
The agony courting through Gabe's body was unbearable, and a primal scream ripped out of his throat as he was pulled under. The shark's ferocity was terrifying, and its serrated teeth tore through Gabe's flesh. Blood bloomed in the water around him, painting the ocean red in a gruesome display of violence. With every shake of its head, the predator inflicted more damage on its helpless prey, determined to tear him limb from limb. The shark's rage was unrelenting, and it thrashed about violently in the water, dragging Gabe's helpless body with it. As the beast twisted and turned, its razor-sharp teeth tore through Gabe's flesh, and the water became a frenzy of foam and churning waves. With a sickening snap, the shark bit off Gabe's arms and shoulders, the force of the attack flinging his lifeless body through the water like a rag doll. The violence of the attack was so sudden and devastating that Gabe's mangled carcass was left floating in the predator's wake, his blood staining it. The water around the boat was a gruesome sight, a mix of froth and red with pieces of torn flesh floating ominously on the surface. Tabor, one of the witnesses of the attack, was paralyzed with shock and horror, unable to do anything as the vicious predator claimed its victim. Even if he had managed to throw a life buoy, it would have been too late. The initial attack had been instantly fatal, and there was no chance of survival. With the ferocious attack over, the shark retreated into the depths of the sea, its massive jaws now latched onto Gabe's lifeless body. With effortless grace, the predator dragged its prey down into the murky depths, where the darkness swallowed them whole. Still in shock from the brutal attack, Tabor immediately reported the incident to the authorities. Search teams combed the area for days, scouring the waters for any sign of Gabe. But it was a fruitless search. And as time went on, hope began to dwindle. Then, one day the authorities captured a massive tiger shark in the same area where the attack had occurred. With grim determination, they cut open the predator's stomach, and what spilled out was a horrific sight. The remains of what had once been Gabe were now reduced to a few ragged pieces of flesh, barely recognizable as human. For the witnesses of the attack, the memory of that day would haunt them forever. The emotional trauma of watching a friend and loved one torn apart by a vicious predator was a wound that would never fully heal. Even the ocean, once a source of solace and peace, was now a place of danger and death. A reminder that the natural world was a place of constant struggle and survival. In the annals of Mexican history, a tale of a dedicated woman named Ava exists. She toiled tirelessly in the bustling corridors of a renowned hospital in Mexico, where life and death danced in a delicate balance. Ava, though, was not just a healer in the hospital. She was a member of a family, a family of four that included her husband, whose name has been lost to time, and their parents. Ava's commitment to her profession was unwavering. She worked long hours, often leaving little time for her family. Her family understood the demands of her job and supported her wholeheartedly. Yet one constant source of concern and tension in Ava's life was her husband's persistent worry about her well-being. Her husband, whose name has faded into obscurity, was constantly anxious about Ava's health and the toll her demanding job was taking on her. She worked late into the night, seldom indulged in moments of relaxation, and rarely partook in simple pleasures. This unrelenting dedication wore her down, taking a toll on their marriage. One fateful Sunday, Ava was at home, a rare occurrence in itself when her husband shared an idea with the family. A full-fledged tour to the seaside of Mexico, an opportunity for them to break away from their routine and bond as a family. The prospect of such a getaway filled the air with excitement, but Ava hesitated. Her schedule was always bustling, and she found stepping away from her responsibilities challenging, even for a day. However, her family quickly reminded her that freedom and relaxation were just as crucial as her medical duties. They understood the significance of healthcare, but recognized the importance of nurturing their well-being. After much persuasion, Ava finally agreed, 
and her husband took charge of planning the excursion. The following weekend, they were all set for their adventure, traveling in a single car filled with anticipation. As they reached their destination, the seaside was alive with the laughter and joy of many people. They carried their picnic bags and chose a serene spot to sit and relish the moment's beauty together. Time seemed to drift away as they soaked up the tranquility of the sea. However, their day took an unexpected turn when Ava's family decided to arrange for a rented boat to explore the waters. They were excited and ready for the new experience as they boarded the vessel. Ava, always one to capture precious moments, started clicking pictures with her husband and parents. The view was breathtaking. The water glistened under the sun's golden rays, and all seemed perfect until an ominous change occurred. The boat suddenly began to rock, and they heard unsettling sounds beneath the water's surface. A chill ran down the spine of Ava's husband as he peered into the depths. Emerging from the azure abyss was a sight that would haunt their nightmares. A massive great white shark, a formidable predator of the seas. It had appeared seemingly out of nowhere, its sinister presence sending shockwaves through their group. The great white shark swam toward Ava's husband with terrifying speed and accuracy, as if under the control of an evil force. It had seized his body in mere moments, leaving the family frozen in shock and terror. Ava's parents cried out in pain as they watched their son-in-law being drawn beneath the surface by the ferocious predator's unrelenting jaws. The boat's captain, realizing the gravity of the situation, urgently called for everyone to retreat, but Ava's family could not accept leaving their loved ones behind in such a horrific predicament. They pleaded with the captain to do something to save their son and husband, but the danger was too great. Reluctantly, the captain turned the boat back towards the safety of the shore. The journey felt excruciatingly long as they left their beloved family members behind. Trapped in a nightmare they could hardly comprehend. It was a heartbreaking decision, but it was made out of necessity. Upon their return to the shore, Ava's family was met with sympathy and disbelief from the onlookers. They struggled to come to terms with the shocking and sudden loss they had experienced. The thought of the great white shark carrying their son and husband away haunted their thoughts, leaving them with a profound sense of helplessness. News of the tragic shark attack spread like wildfire, reaching the far corners of Mexico and beyond. It became a sensational headline. The story of an idyllic family outing turned into a nightmare. Ava, who had been a healer all her life, was now in need of healing herself. She could hardly fathom the reality of her beloved husband's death, and her grief weighed heavily on her fragile shoulders. Ava's physical and emotional state deteriorated rapidly after the tragedy. She was admitted to the hospital where she had dedicated herself to saving lives. The irony was not lost on her, and the familiar surroundings constantly reminded her of her loss. As Ava battled grief and her demanding profession's physical toll on her, her family stood by her side. They had lost a son and a brother, but they still had Ava, and they were determined to help her through this ordeal. The passage of time did little to ease the pain. Each day was a struggle for Ava, a reminder of the life she had lost. Her husband, whose name had been lost to the ocean's depths, was constantly present in her thoughts and dreams. She clung to their shared memories, seeking solace in the love they had once known. The family, too, found it challenging to move forward. The seaside excursion meant to strengthen their bonds had left an indelible scar on their hearts. They lamented the loss of a cherished family member and the innocence and happiness that a great white shark's jaws had shattered. The family found solace in one another's company in the following years. They cherished the memories of their son and brother, holding on to the love they had shared. Once a place of joy, the seaside became a solemn pilgrimage site where they paid tribute to the one they had lost. The tragic tale of Ava and her family serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the unpredictability of fate. It reminds us that even amid unimaginable loss, family bonds can provide the strength to endure. Ava's story also underscores the importance of self-care and the need to balance our professional and personal lives. As time marches, the memory of that fateful seaside excursion and the great white shark's relentless attack will continue to haunt the collective memory of Ava's family. They will forever carry the scars of that tragic day, 
and the love and resilience that helped them weather the storm. The story of Ava and her family is a testament to the enduring power of love and the strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Sarah Johnson is a 26-year-old American woman whose soul dances to the ocean's tune. She's no ordinary lady. She's a dedicated marine biology student who's had a lifelong affair with uncovering the secrets of the deep blue. Imagine a sunny day in Florida, right at Crystal Shore Beach. It's as if the universe tailored this place for her. Soft sands, waters as clear as crystal. A paradise for her maritime fascination. The date? July 27, 2007. A day etched into her memory like a precious seashell she'd picked up on her childhood beach trips. Sarah's love for marine life isn't just a random fling, it's the real deal, a lifelong romance. She's the kind of person who can talk for hours about different species of corals or the peculiar behavior of octopuses. When she's not immersed in her studies, she's often found with her nose buried in a book about ocean exploration. Hailing from a small coastal town in Maine, Sarah's connection to the sea runs deep in her veins. Her childhood was filled with salty breezes and the sound of crashing waves. She spent hours combing the shores for seashells and watching seagulls dart across the sky. University life found her at the prestigious Harborview Institute, where her marine biology dreams were nurtured by passionate professors who saw her potential. She was a regular at the Campus Marine Center, always eager to lend a hand in caring for the resident sea creatures. When she wasn't in class or at the center, she could be found at the local pier, sketching marine life in her journal. So there she was, on that memorable July day in 2007, standing on the sandy shores of Crystal Shore Beach. The sun kissed her skin, the salty breeze tangled her hair, and the waves whispered tales of adventure. It was her sanctuary, where she felt most connected to her dreams and the ocean's heartbeat. So, Sarah is standing at the edge of the water, board in hand, ready to conquer the waves. She's got friends too, the kind who are always up for a splashy adventure. They're like a tight-knit crew, always in sync with the ocean's pulse. But something's not right. Sarah's got this odd feeling, like butterflies in her stomach. But she's not one to back down. She wades in, the water embracing her ankles. Her buddies are already catching waves, but Sarah's a bit off her game. She decides to chill on the beach for a bit, letting the sunshine warm her skin. After a lunch of sandwiches and giggles, Sarah's back in the saddle, or on her board. Her friends are showing off their skills, riding waves like pros. Sarah's cheering them on, marveling at how they dance with the water. Little did she know a different kind of dance was about to begin. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a shadow emerges beneath the surface. It's not just any shadow, it's the ominous silhouette of a great white shark. This apex predator is like the ocean king locked onto its target, Sarah. With a burst of speed, the shark lunges, jaws wide open. Its teeth sink into Sarah's leg, a vice grip that sends shockwaves of pain through her body. She screams a raw, primal sound that pierces the air. In an instant, she's pulled beneath the waves, thrashing in a battle for survival. Sarah's fighting with all her might, kicking, punching, doing whatever it takes to break free from the shark's relentless hold. Salt water fills her mouth, burning her throat as she fights to reach the surface. The shark, unfazed by her struggle, only tightens its grip. Sarah's vision blurs, pain radiating from her leg as adrenaline courses through her veins. In the distance, her friends have turned into real-life heroes. They paddle like mad, their shouts mingling with the crashing waves. It's a race against time, a desperate bid to rescue their friend from the jaws of a predator. With a final surge of strength, Sarah gouges at the shark's eyes. It's a primal move, a last-ditch effort to save herself. The shark releases its grip, a victory that comes at a price, a trail of blood in the water. When her friends finally reached her, they acted like a lifeline in chaos. Their hands grabbed her, pulling her battered form onto their board. Sarah's breath came in ragged gasps, her body a canvas of bruises and blood. Despite the pain and the fear that clawed at her, she clung to consciousness. She will survive more vital than ever. They paddled back towards the shore, a turbulent journey that mirrored the battle she had just faced beneath the waves. The water, once a playground, now seemed like a treacherous expanse. As they neared the safety of the sand, a crowd had gathered, their faces a mixture of concern and morbid curiosity. It was a sight that sent a shiver down Sarah's spine. 
a reminder of the sheer power of the ocean's inhabitants. The ambulance's wailing siren sliced through the air. Paramedics rushed to Sarah's side, their movements efficient and practiced. Her leg was a mess, a gnarly patchwork of torn flesh and exposed bone. The pain was like a relentless drumbeat, a reminder of the battle she had fought with a predator of the deep. But amid it all, these paramedics were like guardian angels, their calm demeanor a soothing balm for her frayed nerves. They worked swiftly, stabilizing her, administering pain relief, and offering words of reassurance that felt like lifelines to sanity. At the hospital, Sarah's journey took on a new chapter. Her family and friends formed a protective circle around her, their faces etched with worry and concern. The hospital room became a haven where her battle scars were tended to with care and precision. Her leg, now a canvas for stitches and bandages, constantly reminded her of her ordeal. The pain, both physical and emotional, became her companion. Each step in her recovery felt like a small victory over the jaws that had clamped down on her. The mental healing was a slow, relentless process, like the ebb and flow of the tides. Flashbacks haunted her, and nightmares gripped her in the darkness, but she held on, her determination a beacon of light in her struggle. And as the days passed, a new chapter began. Sarah returned to her studies, and her passion for marina biology reignited fiercely. Once a realm of wonder, the ocean became a field of study, where she sought to understand the creatures that had forever changed her life. Her journey wasn't just about surviving a shark's attack, it was a testament to resilience, the unbreakable bonds of friendship, and the human spirit's incredible capacity to triumph over adversity. Sarah Johnson's story was a reminder that even when faced with the darkest depths, human nature could rise ride the waves of uncertainty, and continue moving forward with unwavering strength. In 2005, Millie was on Silver Moon Beach, California, USA, off the coast of Baja, California, Mexico. At 35, Millie had become a seasoned marine biologist, earning a reputation for fearlessly pursuing knowledge about the ocean's most enigmatic creatures. The Maritime Authority detached her to study the ocean species and assess any potential dangers they faced. Silver Moon Beach, located on the coast of California, held a rich history of marine life, and Millie was endlessly fascinated by its depths. Navigating the waves in her specialized research speedboat, she couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and reverence for the world beneath. Millie embarked on a solo expedition, equipping her boat with state-of-the-art equipment to document the behavior and movements of the ocean's apex predators. The tranquil morning hinted at the mysteries beneath, and Millie was eager to uncover them. As the day wore on, the calm seas whispered calmness that only the ocean held. Millie meticulously observed, etching every detail into her logbook. The hours passed in a rhythmic cadence of the waves until a sudden shift in the air signaled an imminent change. The ocean's surface trembled without warning, sending ripples in every direction. Millie's heart raced as a primal instinct urged her to seek shelter. Then a colossal form emerged, a great white shark slicing through the water with a graceful yet terrifying precision, its dorsal fin leading the way. Her breath caught in her throat as she watched the massive creature approaching, dominating the surroundings with its presence. The shark's immense power and primal majesty held her in a spellbound trance. In an instant it leaped, defied gravity as it breached the surface, and revealed rows of razor-sharp teeth glistening in the sunlight. Panic surged through Millie's veins, but her years of training kicked in. She fumbled for the radio and sent out a desperate call for assistance, her composed voice though betraying the urgency that coursed through her. In the midst of the chaos, Millie's voice remained remarkably composed as she declared Mayday. The urgency in her tone was palpable as she succinctly narrated the dire scenario unfolding around her. The treacherous predator, a massive great white shark, continued its menacing circle around her beleaguered research vessel, as if orchestrating a relentless assault against its prey. Each pass of the shark tested the vessel's structural integrity, causing it to rock dangerously threatening to tip it into the unforgiving embrace of the ocean depths. With each impact, the vessel groaned under immense pressure and water began to seep in through compromised seals and fissures, adding to the urgency of the situation. In the distance, 
Millie's distress call reached the Maritime Authority's Vigilant Monitoring Station, where seasoned professionals manned their posts with unwavering dedication. The call triggered a frenzied symphony of activity as alarm lights blinked and sirens wailed. Swiftly and with practiced precision, the Authority dispatched a highly trained response team, armed with both the expertise and equipment required to confront such a perilous situation. Their every move was marked by the knowledge that time was an unrelenting adversary, ticking away with each passing second. The fate of Millie and her vessel hung precariously in the balance, and the response team's determination to reach her swiftly was unwavering, for they understood that the line between peril and salvation was a thread, and they were racing against its inevitable unraveling. Millie clung to the last vestiges of hope as the minutes stretched into an eternity. The relentless predator continued its assault, driven forward by its primal instincts. Then the response team arrived, shining like a beacon of hope. With precision and expertise honed through years of training, they maneuvered their boat alongside Millie's, their eyes fixed on the massive adversary threatening her life. They quickly devised a plan and carefully chose a net for its strength and durability. The team worked in synchrony and cast the net with practiced precision. The great white shark was momentarily ensnared and thrashed against its constraints, showcasing the untamed force of nature with its raw power. The team temporarily subdued the shark and swiftly moved to secure Millie's safety. They pulled her aboard their vessel, and a mixture of relief and gratitude washed over her. She watched as the magnificent creature, still entangled, struggled against its captivity. Hours later, the team carefully released the great white shark into its natural habitat. It surged forward, embodying the untamed spirit of the ocean. Millie, who was now safe and on solid ground, watched with a mixture of reverence and awe. She had encountered the great white shark, which had been a dance with the sublime, reminding her of the beauty beneath the waves. In the days that followed, Millie reflected on the profound experience. Her respect for the ocean and its inhabitants deepened, testifying to the delicate balance between humans and the untamed world surrounding them. As Millie returned to her research, she carried with her a newfound appreciation for the wild. It reminded her that harmony was waiting to be understood, even in the face of nature's most formidable creatures. The great white shark, once the user's adversary, now symbolized the feral wonders that call the ocean home. The sea breeze carried a sense of serenity as Millie stood on the deck of the rescue vessel, her eyes fixed on the receding figure of the great white shark. It surged forward and disappeared into the vast expanse of its home. Millie thanked her rescuers, her voice tinged with genuine appreciation. They saved not only her, but that magnificent creature as well. Millie returned to her research with a newfound vigor in the following days. She focused her observations, making her notes more meticulous. She delved into the behaviors and habitats of various marine species, driven by a desire to unravel the ocean's wonders. She collected invaluable data in the ongoing efforts to conserve and protect these creatures. Weeks had turned into months, and Millie's reputation as a fearless marine biologist had grown. She published her findings in prestigious journals, gaining recognition from her peers in the scientific community. Yet amidst the accolades, she stayed grounded. Natalie Summers stands on the shores of San Marina Beach, her toes sinking into the warm, sun-kissed sand. The picturesque coastal town was known for its pristine beaches and breathtaking sunsets. Nestled along the Pacific Ocean, the town had a rich maritime history, with sea creatures ruling the waters. Yet on this idyllic day in 2007, the town was about to write a new chapter in its annals. Natalie, a woman in her late twenties, always felt a deep connection to the sea. Growing up near the coast, she spent countless hours swimming, surfing, and most importantly, bodyboarding. Her friends nicknamed her Sea Flower for her unparalleled love for the ocean. Natalie had an unconventional passion for feeding the sharks. She believed in bridging the gap between humans and apex predators, hoping to educate people about the misunderstood creatures lurking beneath the surface. Every weekend, she ventured out on her bodyboard, armed with bags of fish scraps and offered her underwater friends a feast. However, this weekend was different. The news spread like wildfire that a magnificent great white shark had appeared near the coast. 
Yet even the bravest locals had shivers sent down their spines by her immense size and fierce reputation. As Natalie ventured further into the deep blue on her bodyboard, a mixture of excitement and trepidation coursed through her veins. She could hardly wait to see the shark up close, her heart pounding like a tribal drum. The sea appeared eerily calm but belied the storm brewing beneath the surface. A school of smaller sharks circled her, their sleek bodies glistening in the sunlight. Natalie threw handfuls of fish scraps into the water, and the sharks darted to grab their share. The ocean seemed tranquil, but fate had other plans. Without warning, a great white shark erupted from the surface and surged towards her. It clamped down on Natalie's leg with terrifying force using her immense jaws. Her body was seared with pain as she screamed while the great white shark splintered her bodyboard in its jaws. A whirlpool of chaos engulfed Natalie's world. She thrashed in agony, desperately trying to break free from the vice-like grip of the predator as blood clouded the water. The shark fixed her cold, merciless eyes on her prey and had other plans. It released its grip with a mighty jerk, sending Natalie hurtling through the water, disoriented and bleeding profusely. In horror, she watched the massive creature circling back, blurring her vision with pain and fear. A miracle appeared on the horizon when Natalie's strength was waning. A sea patrol boat came into view, slicing through the water with its sleek hull. The crew raced to the scene, alerted by the commotion. The boat's crew swiftly assessed the situation, and with nerves of steel, they deployed a rescue net. Natalie clung to the lifeline with trembling hands, and with a heave she was hauled to safety, narrowly escaping the shark's jaws. Natalie's harrowing encounter had left marks on her body. Her leg throbbed in agony, its landscape of torn flesh and shredded wetsuit causing immense pain. The crew worked swiftly, their hands deft and sure. They cleaned and dressed the wound. Feeling the sting of antiseptic as it sharply contrasted with the salt water still clung to her skin. As the boat sped towards the distant shore, Natalie turned her gaze back to the expanse of ocean. The shark still lurked beneath those waves, embodying a might of power and purpose. Her heart raced, not with fear, but with a newfound respect for the untamed world that had nearly claimed her. News of Natalie's ordeal spread like wildfire. Reporters descended upon San Marina Beach capturing the raw emotion that pulsed through the crowd with their cameras. The world's imagination was captured by the story of a woman's battle against a massive white shark on the shores. Candles flickered in the twilight, casting a warm glow on faces etched with concern and hope. People held vigils and whispered prayers for Natalie's swift recovery. The town of San Marina rallied around its sea flower, symbolizing courage in the face of the untamed. Weeks passed, and a relentless cycle of pain and healing marked the time. Natalie's urge, though battered, remained unbroken. She faced the ocean and emerged scarred, but alive. The depths were still ruled by giant species like massive sharks, reminding everyone of the untamed beauty and danger that dwelled in the heart of the ocean. As her body mended, Natalie's resolve grew stronger. She knew that the journey was far from over. The bond between humans and the untamed is a fragile yet enduring thread woven through the tapestry of existence. Natalie's incident had become a beacon, attracting others to the cause of marine conservation. She speaks at schools, community centers, and conferences, her voice serving as a clarion call for understanding and respect. The Queen of the Abyss, who was once a harbinger of fear, now represents the resilience of both predator and prey in the relentless dance of survival. The town of San Marina flourished as its shores bore testament to the indomitable urge of those who dared to embrace the untamed. Surfers were carving through the waves, swimmers were reveling in the cool embrace of the sea, and adventurers were venturing into the depths, each knowing that they shared the water with magnificent and formidable creatures. Natalie had completed her journey, coming full circle. The woman who had once dared to feed the sharks now stood as their guide. The tale had become a testament to the enduring power of the human urge. As the years passed, Natalie continued her mission. She established a marine education center, providing a haven for those seeking to explore the ocean's beauties. And so it transcended into more than a story of survival. The unbreakable bond between humans and the untamed world just beyond the horizon was a testament. The crisp air of a September morning in 1909 sent shivers down Jimmy's spine as he stepped onto the docks of Galveston, Texas. 
He was surrounded by the sounds of creaking wood and clanging metal, as his crewmates worked diligently to prepare their ship for a month-long fishing journey. The shipyard was alive with activity, as ropes were coiled and knots were tied precisely. Galveston, Texas was a bustling hub of commerce and industry, with its shipyard serving as the heart of the city's maritime trade. The shipyard was a maze of wooden docks and towering cranes, with ships of all shapes and sizes lining the water's edge. The air was thick with sounds of metal clanging against metal and the rhythmic thud of hammers against the wood. Men in rough work clothes scurried like ants, hauling heavy equipment and materials from one end of the yard to the other. The salty ocean breeze carried the pungent scent of fish, oil, and sweat, filling the nostrils of all who passed through the area. Aboard the ship, Jimmy lounged on the deck, soaking up the warm sun and breathing in the salty ocean air. Suddenly, a loud splash interrupted his peaceful daydreaming. He jolted upright and rushed to the edge of the ship to investigate. His heart leaped in his throat as he saw his crewmate Tony thrashing about in the water, screaming for help. As Jimmy peered into the murky depths, his heart pounding with fear, he could see Tony struggling to stay afloat and injured from the impact. Without hesitation, Jimmy sprang into action, grabbing a life buoy and jumping overboard to save Tony from the treacherous waters. As Jimmy swam towards Tony, the other crew members watched from above, their hearts in their throats. Suddenly, a dark figure loomed beneath the surface, sending shivers down their spines. They knew all too well the dangers lurking in the ocean's depths, and they feared for Jimmy and Tony's safety. Finally, Jimmy reached Tony and expertly fastened the life buoy around him. He signaled to the crew members above to hoist them back onto the ship, and they pulled with all their might. The strain of the effort was evident on their faces as they struggled to bring Jimmy and Tony to safety. As the crew members frantically worked to hoist Jimmy and Tony out of the water, a monstrous creature suddenly exploded out of the waves with terrifying force. It was a massive 14-foot bull shark, its powerful jaws wide open, menacingly showcasing its serrated teeth. The shark moved with lightning-fast speed, lunging towards Jimmy with deadly intent. In an instant, it had clamped its jaws down on his leg, its sharp teeth tearing through flesh and muscle. Jimmy's agonized scream pierced the air, a blood-curdling sound that echoed throughout the shipyard. The shark thrashed in the water, dragging Jimmy with it as it continued its brutal attack. Blood stained the ocean around them, a macabre display of the shark's ferocity and Jimmy's suffering. The crew members watched in horror as the shark mauled its victim into submission, its strength and power overwhelming. They knew they had to act quickly if they wanted to save Jimmy's life, but as they looked on helplessly, they couldn't help but wonder if it was too late. Despite his valiant efforts, Jimmy's bare hands were no match for the ferocious predator that had clamped its vice-like grip on his legs. The water churned around them with a sickening mixture of blood, torn flesh, and salt water as the shark continued its brutal attack. Tony's eyes were fixed on the gruesome scene before him, his mind unable to comprehend the sheer brutality of the creature before him. The shark's massive jaws loomed over Jimmy's legs, ripping and tearing at the flesh with a savage and unrelenting force. The sound of the shark's teeth gnashing together filled the air, a sickening crunch that seemed to reverberate through Tony's entire body. As the moments passed, Tony felt a wave of nausea and fear wash over him, his heart pounding like a drum. He wanted to look away, shield himself from the horrors unfolding before him, but he couldn't tear his eyes away from the gruesome scene. As minutes ticked away, Jimmy's struggles became weaker and weaker, his body succumbing to the pain and trauma inflicted by the vicious predator. The shark seemed to sense its victory, determination, and strength, unyielding as it pulled Jimmy's helpless and mangled carcass deeper and deeper underwater. The crew on the ship was thrown into a state of chaos 
as they desperately tried to haul Tony back on board as quickly as possible. Their hearts raced with fear and anxiety, their minds reeling from the horror of what they had just witnessed. With trembling hands, they pulled Tony onto the ship's deck, their relief palpable as they saw that he was still alive. But when they looked back towards the water, their joy turned to horror as they saw nothing but a vast pool of crimson, the horrible aftermath of the shark's attack. Tony's physical injuries would eventually heal, but his psychological scars would remain with him for the rest of his days. The trauma of the brutal attack would haunt him, a constant reminder of the fragility of life and the merciless power of nature. The summer of 1996 was harsh, particularly in the tropical climate of the Philippines. The sun beat down mercilessly on the earth, sapping the land of moisture and life. Yet, despite the unrelenting heat, tourists flocked to the island of El Nido, seeking refuge in its pristine waters and sandy beaches. El Nido, though less developed than some of the other tourist destinations in the country, was a veritable haven for surfers. The waves were a stuff of legends, powerful and relentless, drawing thrill-seekers worldwide. One such adventurer was Steve Poe, a 36-year-old man from the United Kingdom. Steve had come to El Nido to experience the thrill of surfing in a tropical paradise, to test his skills against the powerful waves that rolled in from the horizon. As he stepped onto the beach, Steve felt a sense of exhilaration coursing through his veins. The sand was hot beneath his feet, and the sun beat down relentlessly, but he didn't care. He was here for one thing, and one thing only, to ride the waves of El Nido. The clock struck 11 in the morning, and the sun was beating down with a vengeance on the island of El Nido. Steve had been riding the waves for hours and decided to take a break. He swam towards the shore, feeling the salty water caress his skin. As he swam, Steve was enjoying the coolness of the water, letting it wash away the sweat and fatigue from his body. Suddenly, however, his blissful reprieve was shattered by a searing pain that lanced through his leg. It felt like a vice was clamped around his limb, and he knew something was wrong. Frantic, Steve turned to look at his leg and was horrified at what he saw. An 11-foot bull shark had latched onto his left leg, its teeth slowly tearing through his flesh. Blood mingled with salt water, creating a sickening cloud around him. Steve tried to pull away, but the shark's grip was too strong, and he felt its teeth sink deeper into his flesh. He screamed in agony, the sound carrying out over the water and echoing back to him in a haunting chorus. Steve was in a state of pure panic as he tried kicking up the shark with his free leg, hoping to drive it away. But in desperation, he lost his balance and toppled off his surfboard, tumbling headlong into the water. The shark, sensing his prey was at its mercy, took full advantage of the situation and began thrashing around violently, its teeth gnashing through Steve's flesh with every violent movement. The surging waters around him became a churning maelstrom of fury as the shark attacked with savage ferocity. Steve refused to give up, despite the excruciating pain, desperately trying to fend off the beast tearing him apart. But it was a futile struggle, and with each passing moment, the shark seemed to grow increasingly aggressive, ripping and tearing at Steve's flesh. The shark was determined to drag Steve under, and the force of its tug almost made him lose his grip on his surfboard, which was the only thing keeping him afloat. He clung on for dear life, his teeth gritted in agony as the relentless attack continued unabated. Steve's screams echoed across the water, mingling with the frenzied thrashing of the shark, creating a terrifying and heart-wrenching sound. He felt the sharp teeth ripping through his flesh each bite tearing away another piece of his body and dragging him closer and closer to the abyss. In the midst of the chaos, Steve refused to give up hope. He summoned all the strength he had left and started to claw and kick at the shark's grainy skin, feeling the strength of his adrenaline surge through his veins. He knew this could be his only chance to survive, but he refused to let go. In a moment of luck, 
Steve could grab hold of the predator's eyes, and he gouged them with all his might. He knew this was a desperate move, but he had no choice. He had to do whatever it takes to survive the vicious attack. The shark thrashed and mauled at Steve, but he kept on tight and fighting. Through the agony and fear, Steve's determination paid off. After several grueling minutes of struggling, the shark finally retreated in pain, letting go of Steve's mangled limb and disappearing into the water. Steve's body was battered and bloodied, but he was alive. He clung to his surfboard, gasping for air. The salty water stung Steve's open wound as he lay helpless on his surfboard. He knew his survival depended on reaching the shore as quickly as possible. He used all of his strength to hoist himself onto the board and used his arms to paddle towards the beach. Every moment sent agony shooting up his injured leg, but he refused to let the pain distract him from his mission. As Steve approached the shore, a crowd of tourists and locals gathered around him, horrified at the sight of his mangled leg. Steve's leg was a gruesome mess, the flesh torn apart and his bone protruding from his skin. The crowd immediately sprang into action, providing Steve with first aid, trying to ease his pain and helplessly watching as Steve's life hung in the balance. The ambulance arrived in no time, its blaring sirens piercing through the thick atmosphere of tension and anxiety. The medics quickly assessed Steve's condition and rushed him to the hospital. The doctors and nurses tried their best to save Steve's life at the hospital, but the damage was too severe. They had no choice but to amputate his leg. Steve had lost a part of himself, but was grateful for his life. In Japan's history, a young woman named Ada lived with her adventurous family. Ada worked for a company in Japan, while her other siblings had jobs in different places. She was adventurous, much like her family, and they often traveled to various parts of Japan, exploring new experiences together. One of Ada's younger brothers lived in California and hadn't seen each other for a long time. They decided it was time to reunite and have some quality family fun. The family unanimously agreed to visit California, exploring different places and creating lasting memories together. Ada informed her brother about the upcoming trip, and everyone was excited about the reunion. As the days passed, the family members began to prepare for their journey. Ada couldn't contain her excitement about reuniting with her brother and embarking on this long-anticipated family adventure. The family had their plane tickets booked for a Monday morning flight. The reunion was filled with joy as they embraced their parents and sisters after a long separation. Once they arrived at her brother's home, they began reminiscing about old memories and shared a delightful lunch. The bond between family members grew stronger with each passing moment, and they felt grateful for this precious time together. At 3 p.m., they set off for the seaside. Ada, always the documentarian, captured every moment of their family activities with her camera preserving these adventures as cherished memories. As they strolled along the seashore, the family shared laughter and created new memories together. Ada and her brother came up with the idea of taking a boat trip, which everyone enthusiastically agreed to. They reached the pier and boarded a ship that would take them on a journey around the coastal waters. Standing on the deck, they marveled at the beauty of the sea and the serenity it offered. However, an unexpected and terrifying event unfolded as they sailed further into the deep waters. A great white shark, known for its size and predatory nature, suddenly appeared beneath the ship. The commotion and vibrations drew the shark, who approached the vessel at a startling rate. Panic swept through the passengers as the massive shark approached the ship. Amid the chaos, the ship became unbalanced, causing Ada and one of her sisters to lose their footing and fall into the water. It was a harrowing moment as the rest of the family screamed for help. The ship's crew immediately responded to the emergency. A trained swimmer on board bravely jumped into the water to rescue those who had fallen overboard. Unfortunately, he could only save one of Ada's sisters, while Ada and her other sister were left in the water with the approaching great white shark. The situation took a devastating turn as the shark attacked. In moments, Ada and her sister were confronted with the terrifying reality of their predicament. The shark's powerful jaws closed around them, 
and their lives hung in the balance. Amidst the chaos on the ship, Ada's parents and brother were inconsolable, witnessing the horrifying events unfold before their eyes. The crew rushed to provide immediate medical attention to the injured sister who had been rescued, doing everything in their power to save her. Eventually, the ship managed to escape the vicinity of the shark, and the family returned to the safety of the seaside. However, their joy turned to sorrow as they came to terms with the loss of two beloved family members. The unexpected and tragic incident left them in shock and disbelief. Ada's brother decided to leave California permanently after the tragedy. The memories of that fateful day and the loss of his sisters haunted him deeply. He wanted to find a way to cope with the grief and remember his sisters in a way that would bring him peace. The family's story serves as a poignant reminder of the unpredictability of life and the importance of cherishing every moment with loved ones. The memory of Ada and her sister will forever live on in the hearts of their family, a testament to the enduring power of family bonds and the fragility of life's adventures. In the vibrant coastal town of Oceanville, nestled along the shores of California, the year was 1995. The sun-kissed beaches and crashing waves painted a serene picture, concealing the ocean's enigmatic depths below. Here, a remarkable encounter with the ocean's apex predator would unfold, forever etching its memory into the mind of one determined teenager. 16-year-old Alexei Petrov hailed from Ukraine, having journeyed to America to fulfill his father's promise, a reward for his exceptional academic achievements. The reward? a chance to learn the art of paddleboarding on the pristine Californian waters. Alexei had spent weeks honing his paddleboarding skills under the tutelage of a local instructor, Michelle Reynolds. Her deep understanding of the ocean's dynamics had imparted a reverence for its power. Alexei's dedication to his paddleboarding lessons was evident with each passing day. His natural athleticism and keen sense of balance made him a standout among the students. Michelle, impressed by his progress, often spoke highly of his determination to master the art. Under her guidance, he learned to navigate the waves with finesse, his paddle strokes growing confident and purposeful. One fateful September day, Alexei began practicing paddle boarding independently after returning from school. Armed with his trusty paddle board and determination, he headed to the beach, eager to challenge himself beyond the confidence of a lesson. The waves seemed promising, beckoning him to test his newfound skills against their embrace. The rhythmic crashing of the waves provided a fitting backdrop as Alexei set out against the current, each stroke of his paddle propelling him forward with grace. The satisfaction of navigating the waves invigorated him, boosting his confidence as he ventured further into the ocean's expanse. The sun casts a warm golden hue over the water, creating an illusion of tranquility. A peculiar sensation rippled beneath his board as he paddled, sending a shiver down Alexei's spine. The tranquil waters suddenly felt charged with an unseen presence. A deep breath failed to calm his unease and his world was upended instantly. Bursting forth from the water's depths, a formidable great white shark lunged toward him, jaws agape, in a terrifying display of power and aggression. Instinct took over as adrenaline surged through Alexei's veins. He kicked his legs fervently, propelling himself away from the impending danger. The shark's powerful jaws snapped shut, narrowly missing its intended target. The encounter ignited a battle for survival as the shark veered back into the depths, preparing for another assault. The ocean's surface erupted again, the great white shark resurfacing with breathtaking force. Alexei's heart raced as he fought to keep his composure. Gripping his paddle with firm resolve, he deftly maneuvered his paddleboard, dodging the predator's deadly advances. The shark's immense form breached the surface in a heartbeat, jaws aimed at Alexei's leg. With lightning reflexes, Alexei swung his paddle with all his might, delivering a crushing blow to the shark's snout. The impact reverberated through the water, causing the shark to recoil momentarily. Seizing the chance, Alexei propelled himself away, desperate to distance himself from the relentless adversary. The shark's pursuit was unrelenting, its dark eyes gleaming with primal determination. Alexei's heart pounded in his chest as he strategized his next move. His paddle became a defense weapon, each strike a testament to his unyielding will to survive. The battle raged on, a dance of predator and prey amid the swirling currents. 
Summoning his inner strength, Alexei aimed a well-timed blow at the shark's sensitive gills, causing it to recoil in pain. Sensing an opportunity, he gathered his remaining energy and rapidly turned, creating a flurry of bubbles to disorient his foe. The shark hesitated, giving Alexei the vital seconds to propel himself away from the imminent danger. Battered and bruised, Alexei finally felt the shallow warmth of the shoreline beneath him. The battle had taken its toll, but he had emerged victorious, a survivor of an encounter that few could comprehend. As he staggered onto the beach, gasping for breath, a crowd of onlookers gathered, their faces a mix of awe and concern. An alert lifeguard, his face a mix of concern and relief, rushed to Alexei's side, offering a steadying arm and quick reassurances. As the adrenaline that had fueled his battle with the shark slowly began to ebb, Alexei's body trembled, his senses overwhelmed by the stark reality of what had just transpired. The lifeguard's voice was soothing as he guided Alexei to the nearby medical station, where a team of paramedics awaited. Gentle hands worked swiftly to assess his injuries, their professional demeanor a source of comfort. Alexei's leg bore the brutal marks of the harrowing encounter, a jagged pattern of lacerations that told a story of survival against all odds. The paramedics acted efficiently, cleaning and dressing the wounds, their expertise a balm to the pain that radiated through his body. The whirlwind of activity continued at the hospital as Alexei was admitted for further evaluation and treatment. The medical staff marveled at his resilience, their conversations echoing with whispers of his extraordinary battle with the ocean's apex predator. His injuries became a canvas for their expertise, a chance to showcase their dedication to healing. The shark's teeth had left a haunting imprint, a mosaic of abrasions and punctures that mapped the creature's tenacity. X-rays and scans revealed the extent of the damage, a fractured bone, deep tissue bruising, and a constellation of minerwounds that painted a vivid picture of the struggle that had unfolded beneath the waves. The doctors' voices were a symphony of reassurance, their words a testament to their commitment to his recovery. They advised Alexei to undergo wound care procedures to prevent infection, stressing the importance of vigilant aftercare. News of Alexei's incredible ordeal spread through the local community like wildfire. His instructor, Michelle Reynolds, and his classmates rallied around him, their concern reflecting the bond they had forged during their paddleboarding sessions. They visited him in the hospital, their faces a mix of awe and curiosity, eager to hear firsthand accounts of his remarkable encounter. Michelle's eyes held pride and empathy as she stood by Alexei's bedside. Her guidance had prepared him for the unexpected ocean challenges, but even she marveled at the sheer magnitude of his courage in the face of danger. Their conversations were a testament to their shared passion for paddleboarding and a reminder of their respect for the ocean's unpredictable nature. Amid the visits from his instructor and classmates, Alexei's story reached the local media. Reporters sought to capture the essence of his bravery, weaving a narrative of survival against formidable odds. His hospital room became a temporary sanctuary, where his story inspired conversations about the power of human determination and the deep connection between adventurers and the untamed world around them. The incident cast a temporary shadow over the beach, its closure a poignant reminder of the delicate balance between man and nature. Authorities issued shark warnings to safeguard beachgoers, a testament to the ripple effect of Alexei's encounter. The beach eventually reopened, forever marked by the legend of a young adventurer who had stared into the abyss and emerged more robust his indomitable spirit forever intertwined with the relentless waves that had challenged, transformed, and empowered him. An incident unfolded along the rugged coastline of Cape Cod, Massachusetts in 2003. The quaint town of Chatham, known for its picturesque beaches and maritime history, was the backdrop for this harrowing tale. The Cape had a rich maritime heritage with a long shark encounter history making it a fitting setting for this suspenseful narrative. The town of Chatham exuded a timeless coastal environment with its weathered shingles and charming storefronts. The place coexisted with the past and present, weaving the echoes of maritime history into the fabric of daily life. The locals would speak of the beauties of the high seas, tales that seemed to come alive in the salt-laden breeze. Sandra Mitchell, a 48-year-old American woman, embarked on a much-needed summer vacation after a long hiatus from her teaching career. Eager to rejuvenate her urges, 
she ventured to the chilly waters of South Beach, disregarding the warning signs advising against swimming due to recent shark sightings. On that crispy morning, air brushed against Sandra's skin as she stood on the sandy shore of South Beach. Her eyes remained fixed on the vast expanse of the Atlantic. The rhythmic crash of waves filled her ears, beckoning her to the water's edge. She hadn't taken a vacation in years, but this trip to Cape Cod provided a well-deserved respite from the demands of her teaching career. Sandra waded into the chilly embrace of the ocean, and a sense of tranquility washed over her. The water invigorated her, acting as a tonic for her weary soul. She floated, feeling weightless and free, as the worries of the world slipped away with each gentle swell. Unbeknownst to Sandra, a force of nature stirred beneath the surface. A great white shark, a primal power and instinct creature, patrolled the depths with silent precision. It stood as a living relic, a testament to eons of evolution, honing its predatory prowess to perfection. The warning signs along the shore told a tale of recent shark sightings, reminding everyone of the untamed wilderness beyond the tranquil surface. But Sandra, lost in the sea's embrace, paid little heed to them. She couldn't resist the call of the ocean, a siren song. And then in an instant, the world shifted. The water around Sandra churned and frothed as a dark shape hurtled toward her. The great white breached the surface with a thunderous crash, its jaws agape, embodying primordial fury. The ocean's roar swallowed Sandra's scream as the colossal predator closed in. Time stretched, echoing each heartbeat in her ears. In that harrowing moment, salvation arrived as a stranger. A figure materialized on the periphery of her vision. He was armed with a harpoon gun and moved with the calm precision of a seasoned hunter. He aimed and fired without hesitation, and the harpoon found its mark with lethal accuracy. The impact reverberated through the water, causing the shark to release its grip on Sandra. They pulled her to safety, the world a blur of pain and disorientation. The stranger, with a face masked by determination, guided her to the shore, his voice serving as a reassuring anchor amidst the maelstrom of her senses. And then, as swiftly as he appeared, he vanished, leaving behind an incident that would linger long after the adrenaline faded. The Marine authorities had later captured the wounded Great White and transported it to their research facility for examination. Scientists had conducted a battery of tests, probed the depths of its physiology and behavior, and sought to unlock the wonders of this apex predator. After a meticulous study, the researchers later deemed the creature fit for release back into the vast expanse of the Atlantic. It disappeared beneath the waves, leaving a wake of curiosity and wonder. The marine authorities who had captured the wounded Great White in the aftermath marveled that natural engineering was a living testament to the complexity of life beneath the waves. The scientists had descended upon the creature, probing instruments in hand, as they sought to unravel what the massive animal held, and they even removed the bullet that had passed through it after it was shot. Days turned into weeks as they meticulously danced between observation and analysis. They studied the movements of the Great White and dissected its physiology. And each discovery added a layer to the mosaic of understanding. And then, they made the decision. The creature weathered the ordeal its indomitable urge testifying to the resilience of its kind. With reverence and trepidation, they returned the great white shark to the ocean, making it a living emissary of the depths. As it disappeared beneath the waves, they held their collective breath, silently bidding farewell to a creature that defied the boundaries of comprehension. As for Sandra, she endured an arduous but determined recovery. With the passing of summer, Sandra would return to her teaching career carrying with her the scars of life's happenings and the resilience of the human urge. Sandra's road to recovery was marked by pain and determination. The wounds she held served as a reminder of the day she had stared into the abyss and emerged stronger, and testaments to the fragility of life and the tenacity of the human spirit. As the summer waned and the days grew shorter, she resumed her teaching career, carrying a newfound appreciation for the boundless encounters that lay just beyond the horizon. In the quiet moments when the echoes of that fateful day whispered in the recesses of her mind, Sandra found solace in the knowledge that she had stared into the abyss and had emerged stronger. Sandra's memory retained the great white shark, a phantom of the deep, as it etched itself into her mind. 
reminding her of the untamed beauty that danced at the edge of human understanding. It was a world of beauty, danger, and the enduring spirit of those who dared to venture into the ocean. With its radiant glow, the sun descended slowly towards the horizon, enveloping the cliffs of Marlowe's Cove in 2006 in a captivating warm golden hue. Emma Rodriguez, a young woman with dark hair and a determined gaze, stood confidently at the water's edge. Her eyes were fixed on the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean, stretching out before her in all its majestic glory. With their rhythmic dance, the crashing waves captivated her senses, filling her with awe and wonder. Emma's mind was consumed by the sheer magnitude of the ocean's power as she contemplated the wonders beneath its surface. A mix of anticipation and determination filled her as her dark eyes sparkled with intensity. She heard of great white sharks and other species in the ocean and wanted to take a daring journey beneath the sea. Dr. Benjamin Hayes, a tall man with a mop of salt and pepper hair, walked towards Emma. A hint of mischief was revealed in the crinkling corners of his eyes as he eagerly anticipated the upcoming expedition. They formed a potent team as their shared passion for the explorations of the deep propelled them forward. Dr. Hayes called out Emma, his voice brimming with a captivating blend of exhilaration and caution. In the ocean, a massive white shark stood out from the rest with its extraordinary nature. Emma and his friend knew that they had to approach the situation with the utmost care and caution. Emma nodded in agreement, her unwavering gaze fixated on the relentless and tumultuous waves that crashed against the shore. She had a clear understanding of what Dr. Hayes was saying. Now was the perfect opportunity for them to rewrite the books on shark behavior. They were to envision the vast amount of knowledge that they could acquire. As the sun gracefully descended below the horizon, its golden rays cast long and captivating shadows over the picturesque Marlowe's Cove. Emma and Dr. Hayes confidently stepped aboard the research vessel with a sense of purpose and anticipation, their every move guided by the experienced and knowledgeable Captain Robert Thornton. Sarah Williams, who was not only Emma's best friend, but also an accomplished underwater photographer, eagerly boarded the vessel, fully prepared to document every moment of their thrilling journey beneath the waves. The expedition unfolded, and weeks gradually transformed into months as time passed. The crew bravely faced and navigated through treacherous storms that put their mettle to the ultimate test. Each night was filled with suspense as the looming presence of the sharks lurked menacingly beneath the surface, adding an extra layer of tension to their already difficult journey. With every sighting, they grew closer to exploring the wonders that surrounded the sharks. On a fine morning when the heavy fog enveloped the water, Emma's keen eyes caught sight of a colossal shape gracefully gliding beneath the waves. Feeling her heart racing with anticipation, she eagerly motioned for Dr. Hayes to join her. As they gazed through the ethereal mist, a sense of awe washed over them, captivated by the sight of a vast shark effortlessly gliding through the water. It was a mesmerizing display, a testament to this magnificent creature's power and grace. The following days seemed to pass in a blur as she caught up in a whirlwind of adrenaline-fueled encounters. They witnessed breaches that sent water cascading down like a majestic waterfall, marveling at nature's force's sheer power and beauty. They keenly observed hunting behaviors that defied conventional wisdom, their eyes widening in awe as they witnessed nature's cunning and adaptability in action. With its immense size and power, the shark embodied a formidable force of nature, showcasing the untamed beauty of the ocean. Emma found herself amid a heart-pounding encounter with the shark one fateful day. The shark suddenly emerged from the water with a resounding splash, its massive form ascending towards Emma. Before she could react, the immense great white shark dove toward her with its open jaws. Fear and adrenaline flooded through her veins at that instant. The impact sent agony waves through her body, leaving her with bruises and disorientation. Dr. Hayes, ever vigilant, had been at Emma's side in an instant. He rescued her from the water with steely resolve, narrowly evading the shark's deadly jaws. The crew promptly hoisted them back onto the research vessel for safety. Emma's injuries were concealed by the adrenaline coursing through her veins. Still, it was evident that she had narrowly escaped a catastrophe of unfathomable proportions. Emma rested and recuperated in the days that followed, 
her body a canvas of diminishing bruises and aching muscles. The assault served as a stark reminder of the strength and unpredictability of ocean inhabitants. However, it had little effect on her determination. If anything, it ignited a fire within her, a fierce determination to comprehend and revere the sea-dwelling creatures. Emma's wounds recovered over time, leaving scars that told a tale of survival. The memory of that terrifying encounter with the shark was a motivating factor, a constant reminder of the delicate equilibrium between man and nature. Emma returned to the sea with renewed determination, unfazed by the shadows that lurked beneath the waters. Her work persisted with each expedition as evidence of her unyielding spirit and steadfast dedication to the cause. She dove deeper, investigated further, and endeavored to solve mysteries that eluded even seasoned marine biologists. Once a realm of mystery and peril, the ocean had become her sanctuary, a place of solace and amazement. As the expedition neared its conclusion, Emma and Dr. Hayes were filled with a profound sense of achievement, recognizing that they had accomplished something extraordinary. They captured footage that would rewrite the textbooks, as it offers a glimpse into the life of one of the ocean's most formidable creatures. A sense of quiet reverence permeated the air as they returned to Marlowe's Cove, Sarah's camera was filled with many breathtaking images, with each frame serving as a powerful testament to her awe-inspiring encounter with a massive shark. Dr. Hayes and Captain Thornton exchanged glances filled with understanding, their faces displaying the deep satisfaction of accomplishing a successful expedition. Officer Reynolds approached with curiosity and admiration as the passengers disembarked from the vessel. He fixed his gaze on the team and remarked, that they had all done something incredible there. They had done a tremendous service to Marlowe's Cove, and the community would forever be grateful for their selfless actions. Emma's face broke into a warm smile as a profound gratitude filled her. She told Officer Reynolds that they owed their success to the unwavering support of this incredible town. Without their invaluable assistance, their accomplishment would have been impossible to achieve. Over several weeks, Emma and Dr. Hayes engaged in a meticulous analysis of the footage and data they had collected. The behavior of the massive shark provided valuable insights that would revolutionize their understanding of great white sharks. The scientific community was astonished and acclaimed the findings they presented. Once a quiet coastal town, Marlowe's Cove had now become renowned as the birthplace of a groundbreaking discovery. The shark's presence had undergone a remarkable transformation as they have now become a tangible reality that is forever etched into the annals of marine science. The expedition expanded Emma and Dr. Hayes' knowledge and forged a bond that transcended the depths they had explored. The indelible mark of the massive shark was carried by them, serving as a constant reminder of the untamed wonders that continued to roam the vast expanse of the ocean. As time passed, they established themselves as individuals whose names were closely associated with the thrilling pursuit of adventure and the exhilarating quest for discovery. Emma Rodriguez and Dr. Benjamin Hayes, fueled by their shared passion for unraveling the mysteries concealed within the depths of the sea, persistently pursued their research endeavors. Marlowe's Cove became a magnet for scientists from all corners of the globe as they eagerly flocked to the site to study the invaluable data and witnessed the very location where this groundbreaking discovery unfolded. The town, which was once known for its peaceful atmosphere and lack of activity, had undergone a remarkable transformation. It had become a bustling hub of scientific exploration, where groundbreaking discoveries and innovative research were conducted. Moreover, it emerged as a prominent center for marine research, attracting experts and enthusiasts worldwide. The town's newfound reputation as a scientific and maritime research hub brought excitement and opportunity. Breathing new life into its once sleepy streets, Emma and Dr. Hayes positioned themselves as the leading figures at the forefront of this remarkable scientific renaissance. They received invitations to conferences and symposiums and actively participated by sharing their valuable findings and insights with their fellow researchers. Their diligent efforts and research not only resulted in groundbreaking discoveries about the behavior and migratory patterns of great white sharks, but also rekindled a profound fascination and commitment to the cause of marine conservation. Emma and Dr. Hayes, in addition to engaging in their scientific pursuits, actively assumed the role of passionate advocates, 
dedicating themselves to the noble cause of safeguarding the precious oceans of our planet. They tirelessly work to raise awareness about preserving marine ecosystems and the delicate balance beneath the waves. However, while receiving accolades and recognition, Emma and Dr. Hayes managed to maintain their unwavering passion for the sea. They continued their exploration of the oceans, eagerly embarking on exciting new expeditions to study a myriad of elusive marine creatures. They always approached their work with the same reverence and wonder that had fueled their first encounter with a massive shark and other species, as each adventure brought challenges and discoveries. In the crisp air of a March morning in 1909, the rugged shorelines of Pauela, Maui, Hawaii stood steadfast against the rolling waves. Elani, a 19-year-old mother, had grown up with a sea as her constant companion. The sound of the waves crashing against the shore was as familiar to her as the rhythm of her own heartbeat. As she gazed out at the endless expanse of the Pacific, she felt the salty mist settle on her skin like a gentle caress. The sky above was a tapestry of blues and grays, the clouds shifting and swirling like living creatures. The rocks at her feet were rough and jagged, yet somehow comforting in their solidity. Elani had always been drawn to the sea, with its ever-changing moods and infinite mysteries. She had spent countless hours exploring the tide pools and watching the ebb and flow of the tides. The sea was a living thing with a spirit and energy to her. As Alani made her way along the rocky shorelines of Pauella, the sun beat down on her skin, warming her and filling her with a sense of peace. She had come here to gather opihi, small shellfish that clung to the rocks at the water's edge. The sound of the waves crashing against the shore was a soothing backdrop to her work, and she hummed a tune under her breath as she searched for the perfect shell. But as she reached for one particular stubborn shell, she felt a sudden rush of water around her ankles. Before she could react, a massive wave crashed against the shore, sending her tumbling into the water. Panic set in as she struggled to find her footing, but the currents were too strong, and she was quickly pulled away from the safety of the shore. Alani's body was at the mercy of the ocean's power, the waves crashing over her and dragging her deeper and deeper into the water. She fought to stay afloat, but the currents were unrelenting, and she was quickly losing strength. The water around her was a dizzying blur of turquoise and emerald, the sunlight filtering down in shafts of brilliant light. Despite the churning currents threatening to pull her under, Alani's years of swimming experience served her well. Fiercely, she kicked and fought towards the surface, gasping for air as she broke through the water's barrier. But her relief was short-lived as a sudden shadow darkened the water beneath her. All 15 feet of a massive great white shark shot towards her with lightning-fast speed, jaws gaping open to reveal its razor-sharp teeth. In a blur of terror and disbelief, Alani watched as the monstrous predator sank its teeth into her legs, the serrated edges slicing through skin and muscle ruthlessly. Alani tried to escape the deadly grip of the predator, but the shark's grip was too strong. Its jaws clamped shut like a vice. With a loud roar, the massive shark thrashed and twisted on the water's surface, its bulk battering Alani like a rag doll caught in a dog's jaws. Her body was flung about with savage force, her head slamming against the water and her limbs twisting and jerking in a frenzied dance of agony. And then, with a sickening crunch, the shark's jaws closed around Alani's legs once again. This time, however, there was no escape. The shark's teeth tore through her flesh and bones like a hot knife through butter, rending her body in two with a savage snap. As the water turned red with Alani's blood, the shark thrashed and twisted in a frenzy of violence. Its jaws were slick with gore, and its eyes gleamed with a cold, ruthless hunger. For a moment, the world seemed to slow to a crawl, and the only sound was the terrible roar of the sea and the crunching of bone. But then, with a final shudder, the shark released its grip on Alani's body and disappeared into the ocean's depths. The shark's hunger was insatiable, 
and it returned to Alani's battered body with a ferocity that was terrifying to behold. Its jaw snapped and snashed, tearing at her flesh and bones relentlessly. It was as if the shark was determined to leave nothing behind but a pile of shattered bones and tattered flesh. And then, with a final brutal snap, the shark's teeth closed around Alani's neck, tearing her head from her body with a sickening crunch. The sight was a horror beyond words, a violent and merciless act of nature that left no doubt about the true power of the ocean's most fearsome predator. But the shark was not yet satisfied. With a vicious snap of its jaws, it clamped onto Alani's arm and dragged her lifeless body into the depths below, as if to claim its prize and devour it in a hidden lair. After the report of the incident, a desperate search party scoured the shoreline, their eyes scanning the dark waters of any sign of Alani. But they found a gruesome sight that would haunt them for the rest of their days. In the choppy, churning waves, they saw a twisted mass of flesh and bone, torn apart and gnawed by the razor-sharp teeth of a fearsome predator. It was all that remained of Alani, her body reduced to a grotesque jumble of torn flesh and shattered bone. The search party's worst fears were realized as they bore witness to the true power of the ocean's deadliest predator. They knew that Alani had met a violent end at the hands of a merciless killer, her life cruelly snatched away by the unforgiving depths. In the summer of 1917, Atascadero Beach in Morro Bay, California, was a picture-perfect paradise. The sun shone brilliantly in the clear blue sky, casting a warm and inviting glow over the coastline. The sand was soft and powdery, sparkling in the bright sunlight and inviting visitors to stretch out and bask in the glorious warmth. The waves rhythmically crashed against the shore, creating a soothing soundtrack that harmonized with the gentle whispers of the wind. The beach was an idyllic escape where visitors could leave the world's worries behind and immerse themselves in the moment's tranquility. Among the beachgoers was Alyssa Rose, a young mother of two. Alyssa was enjoying a day of leisure with her family on the beach. With a wide-brimmed straw hat shading her face from the sun, she strolled along the shoreline, relishing the salty breeze that blew through her hair. Her bare feet sunk into the warm sand as she gathered shells of all shapes and sizes, admiring their intricate patterns and textures. At around nine in the morning, a low rumble caught Alyssa's ear, and she swirled her head around towards the ocean. As she looked out, she saw a massive wave emerging in the distance, its dark blue crest towering high in the sky. The sound of the wave, amplified by the stillness of the morning, was like a monstrous beast growling in the distance. Alyssa watched as the wave swelled larger and larger, its sheer size and force filling her with awe and terror. The colossal wave seemed to stretch to the heavens, its peak looming above the shoreline like a hulking giant. The closer it got, the more menacing it appeared. Alyssa's heart raced as she realized the danger that was approaching. She looked around frantically, trying to locate her family, but they were scattered around the beach, each lost in their own activity. Before she could call out to them, the wave crashed onto the shore with a deafening roar, sweeping Alyssa off her feet. As Alyssa struggled to keep her head above water, her muscles burning from the effort, she suddenly let out a blood-curdling scream that echoed across the ocean. Jack's heart sank as he watched his wife's face twisted in agony thrashing about in the water. He knew something was terribly wrong. Alyssa's screams were a mix of fear, pain, and disbelief as she felt an excruciating searing pain radiating from her stomach. As soon as Alyssa looked down, the source of her agony became clear. It was a massive 17-foot great white shark that attacked her. The predator had latched onto her body with a primal intent its razor-sharp teeth sinking deep into her flesh. Blood spurted from Alyssa's wound, coloring the water around her in a deep red hue. Alyssa's mind struggled to process the attack as she flailed in the water, trying to break free from the shark's grip. 
but it was too late. The attack was so sudden and brutal that she didn't even have time to react properly. She looked down and saw the predator's massive serrated teeth clamped onto her body, easily tearing through her skin and muscle. The pain was unbearable, and Alyssa's body went into shock. Her life quickly faded away, and she didn't even have the strength to fight back. Her body became limp, and the shark thrashed violently in the water as if trying to tear her apart. As Jack swam frantically towards his wife, the strong currents fought against him, making each stroke more difficult than the last. He was getting closer, but the distance still seemed impossible. As he struggled, his eyes were fixed on the horrifying scene before him. Despite being too far away to help, Jack could still see the gruesome details of the attack. The serrated teeth of the shark had dug deep into Alyssa's flesh, causing blood to pour out of her body like a river. He could see the muscles in her stomach being ripped apart and her innards slowly beginning to spill out. The once beautiful body of his beloved wife was now torn and disfigured, her skin ripped and hanging from her bones. As Jack watched helplessly, the shark continued its savage assault. Then, with a sickening crunch, the shark tore Alyssa's body in half, devouring the lower part while leaving the upper half of Alyssa's mangled carcass in the water. After the shark had mercilessly tore Alyssa's body in half, nothing was left but a sickening scene of carnage, with only the remnants of her dismembered corpse drifting in the water. The once pristine blue water was now tainted with her blood, mixing with the salt and foam of the waves. Jack was still struggling against the currents, his heart pounding in his chest as he witnessed the gory end of his beloved wife. He felt a sense of powerlessness as he watched the shark devour the lower half of her body, leaving only the upper half floating in the water like a gruesome buoy. As the shark retreated to the depths of the sea, Jack finally reached his wife's remains, but the sight was almost too much to bear. Her upper torso was mangled and twisted, her arms splayed out as if reaching for help. The sea had already started to claim her, with her hair and clothes billowing in the current. The tragedy of Alyssa's death was only compounded by the gruesome nature of her end. Her family would be haunted by the horrific details of her attack for the rest of their lives. The vivid images of the shark's brutality forever in their memories.